Good afternoon, good evening, whichever one it is right now. So yeah, uh, amazing conference. Who enjoyed today? So um, this talks, you can switch off a little bit, but please still pay attention. Um, this isn't a technical talk as such. It's kind of a, a little character that if you've been following the hashtag for NGNL, please don't do it now if, you, if you're going to go and look. But uh, you might have seen a character that I was tweeting uh, today. So he's going to join us and take us on a quite of a, hopefully amusing and learning journey. Uh, so the, the talk is called Which Way is Up? Don't be obvious, and it's not that way. Um, so this is uh, a talk inspired by everything that's going on in the industry at the moment. So um, like I wake up every day, and there's something new. And I'm like, what do I need to do? What, do I need to learn this? And there's been a couple of talks that have kind of briefly covered this today. So uh, ahoy there. There's a, a bit of a pirate theme. I'll start it off already. Uh, I'm Todd. I live in England. Uh, I'm 25. Um, I am a, yeah, I'm kind of in between jobs at the moment, not, not been fired. Uh, next week I start as a developer advocate at uh, Telerik. They're based in the US. So um, yeah, it's kind of my last week at a San Francisco based startup this week. So it was good to go out doing a, a great keynote. So um, what are we going to talk about? Uh, the JavaScript boom. There's a lot of booming going on. A lot of sort of positives and negatives from this. There's a lot of people that wake up and go, oh my god, I don't know what to do next. And then there's a lot of people who go, yeah, I'm going to jump on this JavaScript stuff. I'm going to rewrite all my app in Webpack 3.7. Um, so we're going to look at that. We're going to look at people potentially feeling lost in the ecosystem. Those two kind of tie in. I personally believe that sharing knowledge is extremely important. So we're going we're gonna to use our little character to tell this, all these stories. Uh, and imposter syndrome. If anyone's encountered imposter syndrome, uh, we'll probably have at some point. We'll come on to the exact definition if you're unsure of it right now. And then getting outside of the comfort zone. I think that's really important as developers not to just stay in our little box where we're content and we actually push ourselves forward. So uh, this is Jerry. Say hi to Jerry. Hi. So uh, Jay, I didn't come up with a second name from him, but the JS, I had to go with Jerry for Jay. So um, let's learn about Jerry before we can actually tell a story. So Jerry, he, he knows some JavaScript. He dabbles in jQuery and all this kind of stuff. He likes Angular uh, and long walks on the beach. This isn't his dating profile. Uh, he feels a little bit lost on what to learn. I think maybe, well, I feel like this sometimes. Uh, and he also feels a little bit out of place in the industry. He knows great things, but he, he won't voice them. There might be something that's holding him back from saying, you know what, I'm going to write a blog or, you know, sort of submit a pull request. Jerry enjoys the comfort zone. And believe it or not, he's still looking for some treasure. So where did Jerry begin? This guy, jQuery. Who's never used jQuery? Exactly. Cool. This will look beautiful for everyone in here, and everyone's going, oh, no. Uh, so uh, this is how we used to build apps, like we, and websites, of course. We still use jQuery. Angular 1 obviously has jQuery Lite built in. Uh, we, d we did this document ready stuff, and then we sort of wait for it to be ready. The DOM is then passed, and we can bind these click events. And thanks for visiting my awesome app. Then we were like, you know what? Yeah, let's make things amazing. Let's go and get some PHP stuff from a, an endpoint. Um, then we're going to have some promises, and yeah, let's skip that one. Um, then we've got a click event, which adds a class. I know when I first wrote my first add class function in jQuery, I was like, I am the JavaScript guru. And, uh, but yeah, things have moved on now. We don't try and do this. Frameworks wrap all this stuff for us so we, can, we don't have to take care of these nasties. So um, Jerry's put on a bit of makeup. He's, he's happy with jQuery. And um, one of the things um, this talk will do, it'll kind of dip in and out of Jerry's story and come up with a few quotes that hopefully will leave you with some good, good thoughts for the end of the day. So you could say that jQuery started this entire revolution. Um, I think it's quite an important thing 
yeah, there's Webpack, there's like NPM and all this stuff, but a lot of the evolution that we've seen probably started from jQuery. So let's see what Jerry does. Uh, he saves up some money, uh, and he went sailing. But first off, Jerry was in this jQuery zone, and Jerry's like, you know what, yeah, jQuery, never going anywhere. It's amazing. I'm going to keep using jQuery. If you think maybe a couple of years ago, backdate this story slightly. So Jerry goes sailing. This is Jerry on his uh, healthy journey to cigarettes and beer. Uh, so he sails off on his own. I did make these slides myself. So if anyone wants to hire a designer, I can do good. <laughs> um, so yeah, Jerry goes off. And if you think about what happened in the last month, maybe at your job, or maybe in the last year, so this kind of make you think a bit. So Jerry goes off, uh, time passes, and a year goes by. Jerry comes home. He's uh, inherited some penguins. Uh, I'm not quite sure what he's doing, but he needs a shave. So Jerry comes back, and he says, you know what? It, my MacBook ran out of battery on the first day. I'm, I'm just going to go to sleep and wake up in the morning. And Jerry's like, oh, thank God, this Angular thing is still, still around. I'm, I'm good. I'm good for a job. I can come back to employment. And he starts talking to his friends, and his friends are saying, oh, yeah, there's, there's some other things that have come out since then. Try this, try this backbone thing, Jerry. You know, you're missing out. It's got a cool logo. We must, we've got to use it. Then there's this, uh, this evil guy, uh, Grunt. Jerry, you, you've got to use this stuff. Gulp, not sure. You've got to use it, Jerry. Uh, Ember, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, Jerry wakes up, and he's, he's a bit sad at this point. And he's like, you know what? I've got some good skills. I've got good core skills, but I can't learn all this stuff at once. So he, he has a quick cry to himself. So what does he do? What would anyone do? He tries to learn these new things. So uh, Jerry goes and learns Grunt. He says, yeah, you know what? Grunt's the, the best. Solves all my problems. It does my JavaScript concatenation, my lint in. That's it. That's all I need. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, SAS. We'll do that as well. Yeah, yeah. And then he, uh, he writes this huge build system, and he deploys it, and he tweets about it, and, and his mate just goes, that's out of date, Jerry. And he's like, are you, are you kidding me? Like, I've just spent like three weeks working on this huge build system, and you're just telling me it's out of date. So uh, Jerry's sad again. So he tries something new. You can see where this is going. Uh, Jerry learns Backbone. He writes uh, Gmail version 17 in Backbone, just for the fun of it, over a weekend. He tweets it live again. One of his friends replies, it's out of date. Jerry, nobody uses Backbone anymore. So Jerry's pretty upset. He's like, I'm just wasting time. I feel like I'm wasting time. At this point, uh, I was trying to think of a GIF to slap one of his friends in the head or something. But Jerry just kindly stops talking to his friends about code at this point. He says, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to work in my little room. I don't need you guys putting me down. I'm, I'm working hard on Grunt and Backbone. So uh, what does he do? He knows some Angular 1. He says, you know what? I'm just going to keep learning Angular 1. So he continues doing that. And he becomes in love with it. He, Jerry's he's, he's like, yes, Angular 1. It's, it, I, I know everything. I know how to triple transclude a minus Z function. And so yeah, Jerry is the master at Angular. Till one day, till one day. <laughs> Jerry didn't know one thing about Angular 1. So he Googles AngularJS. And he notices the second result was Angular.io. Being an inquisitive mind, Jerry clicks on this to find out Angular 2 is now out, and that he's going to have to throw away all his Angular 1 knowledge, potentially, to then go and learn Angular 2. So Jerry's been rinsing and repeating. He's been up and down with emotions right lately. So um, what does he do next? This is uh, sad, Jerry. This brought a tear to my eye, this slide. So Jerry's out. He's, he's walking along until he, he finds a, a particular ticket on the floor. 
which happens to be an NGNL ticket. <laughs> so how did Jerry's day go so far? <laughs> he, uh, he checked in, he got in. He was like, yep, yeah, I'm going to hand my coat over. <laughs> gonna, gonna, gonna take a leak. Uh, he was thirsty. Probably, probably shouldn't have drank that after that. Uh, then he hijacked the uh, the Angular Air episode. Um, he, he can't talk mine, so he didn't do a lot. But what did Jerry think about NGNL? He kind of uh, he kind of attended a lot of talks, and uh, I mean, there's there's people probably sat in here going, I didn't know everything I looked at today, and that's completely okay. So. This doesn't apply to everyone. It, there might be somebody here. Um, but these have been, been inspired by like feelings I've had from looking at talks and going, wow, that is incredible. I need to learn this stuff. I feel out of place. So um, Jerry's a slight personification in some ways to tell this story. Uh, so Jerry feels out of place at NGNL. now. He's, he's like, wow, all these talks are so good, so good. And then he starts wandering around on his, this is a Pac-Man ghost pirate, by the way. Um, he starts wandering around for someone to talk to, and he meets Eric, ECMAScript Eric. <laughs> so we don't have a, uh, a cutout of Eric, though, due to budget cuts. And uh, Jerry says to Eric, I'm feeling sad, you know, I feel out of place. I feel there's, there's so many be better developers than me. Uh, so Eric kind of, I'll be Eric here and just console Jerry. So what advice did this guy give? He said, Jerry, we're all still learning. Don't be, don't be put off by the fact that all these people are coming in giving great talks, and you're going, I have no idea what you just said. JavaScript is booming. It's a fact. There's, there's, you're never going to learn everything, and that's, that's OK. He said, don't let it scare you. Don't let it scare you. And this is an interesting piece of advice which I, I get asked a lot, like, should I be using Angular 1? And that, should I be using Angular 2? Uh, and with everything in software, the answer of it depends is, is the, the standard one. But you don't ha always have to use the latest stuff. But keep an eye on it. Like, if you're not rewriting your next application in Angular 2 right now, use that Angular knowledge you do have to keep an eye on the APIs that are evolving, that are, ex that are, that are being built right now. So that once Angular 2 is stable, for, for instance, let's just say your development boss says, no, we're not touching Angular 2 until it's dropped, until it's released, until it's stable. So at that point, you've been keeping an eye on it. You can jump in, and then bam, you can use all your existing knowledge, or most of it, to then start building Angular 2 applications. Well, hey, unfortunately, his, his, his eyes stay the same. But Jerry's in love at this point. He says, yeah, that's brilliant advice. Thank you so much. Jerry's feeling good. So what happens? He says, yeah, I'm, I'm going to continue with Angular 1. I'm going to continue with Angular 1. Keep an eye on Angular 2 in the side. I'm going to wait it out. My, my Jerry's development boss, we'll come up with a name for him later, says you have to wait until Angular 2 is out. And it's OK not to know everything. It's OK not to know everything. So a couple of months go by, and Jerry uh, he goes back and talks to Eric with a couple of concerns. And what does he say? He says, how can I get better as a developer? Am I even good enough to share my knowledge? And if you've, if you've, maybe you've got a friend who you, you ask these questions to, um, or you just think them in your head and never repeat them. Uh, am I good enough to even share knowledge? Contributing to open source looks scary, which it is. Uh, so it's a bit of Eric's advice. He says, set up a GitHub profile and just go for it, you know? Just create some projects and see what you can do. There's no harm in trying. Uh, everybody has something to teach others. So there's a lot of people, uh, I, I overheard a few conversations today, and they're like, yeah, this is my first conference, and you might feel a little bit out of place, but don't be. Like, you've, you've got something that you could teach somebody else. And, um, like my previous two job roles, I was a lead engineer, and I would interview and then start training junior developers. And you don't sort of, you can learn a lot off of junior developers because they're, they're new to it and they don't think in the same way that you do. They think differently. And 
I've gone through training exercises, and they've come out with a different solution. I've gone, you know what? That's actually maybe a better way of doing it. I'm not going to tell them that. <laughs> and uh, his last piece of advice was nothing was achieved in the comfort zone, which is true. So this next part, we're going to go through these pieces of advices, and of advices is that a word, and see what happens. So this is uh, Jerry's glorious GitHub profile while he's partying on a beach. He's got a, a project called Treasure Map Rum JS with minus five stars. <laughs> uh, I'll let you digest the little pirate jokes in that picture for another few seconds. You can see with his uh, repository graph, he sort of had this burst of, burst of commits at the beginning, and then there's this huge dry spell, and he's like, oh, I don't know what to do now. I just, just built some stuff. Nobody likes it. I'll give up. Uh, OK, what happens next then? So he's, he's, he's given up at this point, and some guy comes on his, on his uh, GitHub repo, and he's like, this code sucks, man. Don't, doesn't do what I want. You need to fix it. Uh, what does it say? I need to run this plugin in a virtual machine from the bottom of the ocean whilst defending myself against starfish. Add support now as this breaks all my projects. Jerry doesn't know what this means, so he's just like, I'm just going to leave it. And this is quite interesting because open source is really difficult. If, if you're one of those people who, I mean, we all get a little bit annoyed online and the code doesn't work and we throw our MacBooks against the wall. But if you think about like uh, the amount of effort that goes into an open source project, big or small, it's tremendous. So you got open source, it's difficult, right? So we've got repos. Let's start with a repo. Obviously, we'd have some code to write at this point. Um, we've then got issues to fix. We've got PRs to review. We've got comments and questions to answer. Then we've got to add tests. Nobody adds tests. Module systems to cater for. Uh, we've got versioning to think about. And yeah, well, let me go back. Uh, and if you think about this as just one project, that's quite a lot of work. Now imagine if you've got five of those projects or 10 of those projects. So the next time you sort of look at an open source project that's quite popular or, or that does something, just maybe try and like jump in like Jerry will do soon and start helping other people. So um, Jerry starts off and he's like, you know what? I'm I'm pretty sad at this point. I've just had a bad comment on my, uh, my GitHub. And then he sort of says, you know what? I'm just going to let the comment go. So he keeps building. He keeps building. And he becomes in love with open source. And he, he, he lets the, the negatives just fade away. So Jerry succeeds in the end. Now, this. This, uh, the word takeaways might not work here, but in England, a takeaway means some kind of junk food that you order. Um, I know in America, it's called a takeout, and a lot of Dutch watch American TV, so I'm going to explain my poor joke. Uh, he's eating a pizza. So what did Jerry learn from this? He, said he knows it's, in it's intimidating sharing code. I remember uh, like writing my first blog article. I thought, nobody's going to read this. Uh, don't even make a joke. <laughs> don't read my first blog article, please. Uh, it's about PHP. Um, so it's intimidating sharing this code and putting your name on something and pushing it out there and saying, you know what, if anyone wants to use this, feel free. And this is really important. Just don't be put off by any negativity that you do get. Like there's, there's so much more positivity than the negativity, but we always remember the negative things. Like when you go to bed and you're like, ah, oh, that guy who left that comment. Have confidence in yourself. If you're sat sort of thinking, you know what, I have wrote some cool code last week, or I would really love to see this feature in Angular, or I, I want to work on this pull request, don't just sort of let someone else do it. Say, yeah, you know what, I'm going to do it. And I know bigger projects, there is a rush of, uh, like, everybody jumps on a, an issue to try and do it as quickly as possible. Keep creating and keep, keep improving. You won't build. Redux, like the first open source project that you do. You, you won't build like AngularJS as the first project that you do. You will build like something small, maybe just a 10-line piece of function that helps somebody out. But if it helped you out, it's probably going to help someone else out. 
Everybody has something to teach others. So this was another piece of Eric's advice. This blog looks a little bit like mine. Um, I'm sorry for that. The artwork was out of budget on that as well. So uh, this is Jerry's blog. And he, he says, you know what, I'm going to take uh, Eric's advice. He said, I'm going to write an article. I'm going to do it. I'm going to steal Todd's blog and write an article about lazy loading with rum.js. And this can be scary. And I, I tweet a lot of the time, um, like probably over the last year, three or four times, like, like I really recommend setting up a blog. Like it has helped me and it's helped people I've encouraged to set up a blog like tenfold. Um, not only from a job perspective, but when you think you might want to just do a simple blog like uh, explaining array prototype for each, for example, but then you think you know array for each, but when you start to write about it, you really, really know array for each, and you dig so much deeper into explanations and all this kind of stuff. So uh, as ever, there's, um, there's this, this guy, Davy Jones, who left the bad GitHub comment. Uh, he says, uh, this code is slow and non-performant. You should use a reverse twisty loop with a Node Express platform installation, and then gulpify all your assets into the right pipe. XHR to Heroku with triple access tokens to HTTP up the network. So Jerry doesn't know what that means. I don't know what that means. If anyone does, please stand up. Um, so this was the guy who left a bad comment on GitHub. And Jerry's like, ah, oh, he's back. He's back. He wants to come and take the, to take the mick out of my, uh, my GitHub pro project. And then uh, the next day, Jerry wakes up. He gets another, another comment. And he's like, oh, no, it's, it's going to be a bad comment. And he, he goes to read it. He says, not bad, not bad. And what does not bad say to you? Like, if somebody commented, if you'd written a load of code and some articles and somebody put not bad, it's, it's not great, but it's not bad, which in my mind says that he took something away from that article. Like, he would have taken something that he's written on that page. Uh, away with him. So he's going to check this out. Jerry's a little bit happier. Always like happy Jerry. Uh, I hope I don't get sued by Disney or whoever for all these pictures. Um, so Elizabeth Swan, uh, she said, wow, this is amazing. Thank you so much for writing this. You just helped me with a project of mine. Thank you, thank you. And like I said, if you, if you write one piece of code that you think is helpful, people like this are going to think it's helpful too. And if you're going to help someone out, you're going to help someone else out, because they're going to share that code as well. Jerry's like, yes, I need to keep blogging at this point. So uh, he keeps working on open source. He keeps working on blogging. He doesn't have a social life anymore. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, so he builds up his blog. He starts getting a reputation for himself. And he installs this Google Analytics thing, which everyone's been telling him about. Thankfully, it's still in date. Uh, and it's got 1,021 concurrent users. And he's like, wow, where are all these people coming from? This is real as well. Jerry's blog is real. Uh, and it was at the top of Hacker News for three days. So uh, this is Jerry's lazy loading with rum post. Just, uh, how many points? 594 points. So it was there. It's got 102, yeah, 102 comments. So it went viral. His, his lazy loading with rum went viral. And if you've ever created uh, a piece of code that you've put on GitHub and shared it, or even an article that you've written, um, that may not, may not go viral to this effect, but if you get 10 retweets or, or you know, this kind of recognition for something that you've done, it makes you feel really good. So uh, this inspired him to keep going. And the edible takeaways. Jerry knows that the, the online world isn't always kind. He says to himself, the positives outweigh the negatives. And he had a, a negative comment, he had an all right comment, and he had a brilliant comment. And when he goes to bed, he's going to think about the brilliant comment that made his day. He also thinks that sharing knowledge is extremely important. He's shared enough knowledge to realize that, one, it's going to make him a better developer. One, people are going to find him and offer him potentially a another job on a different boat or something. Um, but sharing knowledge uh, for Jerry was extremely important. It got him places. You can always teach some th someone something new. Building you will succeed. You don't know code 
until you can write about it. And this is a, a quote that I put together because I tell this to people all the time. Back with the array for each example, is you think you know how to write an array for each, but when you start to blog about the API and the internal workings, you really start to know how things work. So when you actually then take the knowledge from your brain and, and try to explain it on paper, to, or keys uh, in, our, in our modern age, try and explain it to someone in a humanly way, that's extremely difficult. Um, and then you end up getting asked to talk at conferences like this, um, which, is a good, which is a great thing. Uh, and nothing was out achieved in the comfort zone. And uh, 20 minutes before this talk, I was not in my comfort zone. Um, I'm comfortable now. Um, that couch is very comfy. So uh, we, want, we want a round of applause in a second. But Angular 2 hits stable in Jerry's lifetime. It's got 6,982 votes. I have forward dated this in somewhere. Oh, OK. But Eric posted this. Angular 2 hits stable. And Jerry's like, yes, my time has come. My boss is going to let me use Angular 2. So he starts working with it. And now, taking Eric's last piece of advice is how does Jerry then step outside of his comfort zone? We know he likes working in the comfort zone. And it's this green button here. Who doesn't like or who would never press this green button on GitHub to someone else's project? I don't believe you. Right. I don't like pressing this green button. So um, how does Jerry get himself out of the comfort zone? He goes on to the Angular repo. Uh, this is a made up issue, by the way, guys. Um, don't try and find it. Uh, and he goes and fixes a memory leak in the component compiler, whatever that might be. So um, he says, you know what? He presses the, the, the submit button. He's done his pull request. He slams his MacBook lid. And he says, you know what? I'm not even going to look what happens. I don't want to know. Until he wakes up in the morning, and he's like, oh, I wonder what happened with that repo. Could they have just, oh, there's, there's a couple of scenarios. They just closed the issue. No, nope, Jerry, what on earth are you talking about? Oh, there's the other scenario where they provide him a bit of feedback. He then it reiterates the code and then submits the pull request again. Or well, there's the, the better scenario for Jerry of where his pull request gets merged to Angular's core. And that, seeing that kind of email would give you a pretty good feeling. Um, and contributing to open source, it gives you a good feeling because people build all these powerful tools and we use them every day. And if you're sat sort of thinking, yeah, you know, I would love to build an open source project. I would love to contribute to an open source project. Then, like, just, just do it. Like, it's, it's there. So the takeaways. Anyone can contribute to the open source. It's open. You can learn great things outside of the comfort zone. And I think it's too easy at times to perhaps join a company that have a very specific way of doing things and that you get tied into their way. And they, they're not open to change. But we're in a boom of JavaScript at the moment where we need change like on a daily basis. It might not be complete rewrites of the app. Otherwise, it would never get pr uh, pushed to production. People will judge you, uh, but hold, hold your head high. So let's just say each of us goes home, we create an open source project, we put it, put it out there. You will get judged. Somebody will come along and say, I don't like that code. They haven't read a line. They haven't read the docs. They just don't like it. There are people like this, mostly on Reddit. Um, but yeah, keep building and keep your, keep your head high. And this is important, is don't be afraid to believe in yourself. Like, don't just let other people build all these great things. Like, if everybody said, oh, you know what, I'll leave it to someone else, then nothing would get built. This is a, a cutesy line. So there's a piece of Jerry, I think, in everyone. So uh, hopefully this, this talk's kind of opened up a few doors mentally and sort of said, yeah, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish that pull request, or I'm going to do X, Y, Z. Z, don't know why I said Z, Z, I'm English. Um, so what happens now is Angular 2 is stable. Jerry's like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to master it. So Jerry probably will be speaking here next year uh, on Angular 2. 
So he buys this new bandana, and uh, after all he's been through, <sighs> what does he learn? So he was content with rapid change. He was, he's happy to wake up tomorrow, and there'll be Angular 3 in the making. Well, there's something completely new that's going to change, the, and we're going to have to rewrite things. He's content with that. He knows it's going to happen. He also knows that nothing is going to be around forever. Like, it's a lot of, um, we can devote ourselves to one single thing, but things keep changing, and we're in this boom at the moment where nothing will be here in five, ten years' time. Jerry wasn't scared of the future, and for some reason decided to go sailing again. So I just want you to think, based on what... <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Based on what Jerry has gone through and everything that he's learned, would you be comfortable right now getting on a boat with Jerry, go sailing for a year, and coming back and just try and think of where the web and all the, all the tools that we use are going to be? And there's a last little piece here. I, just, I like this quote. Uh, it's, I think it's like 17 times I've showed it. Nothing is achieved in the, inside the comfort zone. And the biggest thing you can do is just go for it and just do it. Thank you, Val.